Um, what we're going to talk about today is scheduling. And this is a sizable topic that I could spend several lectures about. It's a topic where I want you to come away with a couple clear deliverables from it. By deliverables, I don't mean something you're going to give to me, but a couple key understandings from it, a couple high-level points, okay? And I'm just going to list them ahead of time so you're very clear what they are because I get to present a bunch of stuff. And because of the time, it's going to be quick. Number one, I want you to understand why we schedule. Number two, how it relates to estimation. Number three, I want you to understand how Gantt charts, what, what they are as a technique, and how they compare with uh, what's called critical path method, okay? Which um, is a method that allows you to reason about what depends on what, and therefore, if you delay one thing, how it delays other things, including the whole project deadline, a, a deliverable timeline. Beyond that, I want you to know how the algorithm runs for CPM. It's actually a nice, nice little linear time algorithm. Uh, runs with two passes, forward, backward pass, and it's a classic uh, algorithm involving topological sorts of of, of uh, graphs. Um, now, that algorithm is going to have certain inputs and certain outputs, and I want you to know about those in addition to how it works. I also want you to know something about the notion of float or slack, okay, not as the system that you use to communicate, but in terms of how much leeway you have with tasks. And critically, no pun intended, I want you to understand the concept of a critical path because that's absolutely central for understanding prioritization of different tasks within a project. And the basic deal will be that certain tasks are much more important to hop on than others because they are in the critical path, meaning that if they're delayed, it's going to delay the whole project. Other tasks will have leeway, will have float, will have slack. In other words, you could delay them without delaying the project as a whole. Okay, So um, those are going to be a bunch of deliverables, and I expect you to have a sense of, of those things I've just enumerated pretty well. Okay, okay. so so we've seen estimation. And briefly, last time we talked about estimation, in addition to talk about weights of blue whales and, and number of books published in 1776 in the U.S. and amount of currency and circulation and length of Pacific coastline, we talked about estimation for software projects. And what were some of the what were some of the challenges with estimation? We think we are better than we actually. Are. Good. We think we're better in terms of. Two things. What? Um, nailing down a time. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So we give much wider, or much more narrow estimates associated with uncertainty than are really needed. We, we say we're much more confident than we should be. What's another thing? We flatter ourselves in how long we think it will take. We almost always underestimate how long it will take. And... If you are underestimating or overestimating by a certain amount, say by by a week, um, which would be worse? Uh, underestimating underestimating um, is generally worse because it's generally much worse to to have to go longer than it is to finish early. When you finish early, people are happy. When you stay longer, people are upset, and often it's much worse. Um, uh, if you're if you finish late, because other people are counting on it. So estimation was a key process. Now estimation allows us to estimate how long a certain task takes. Scheduling is the process of taking many estimates and knitting them together into a set of task durations. It will give you a sense of how long a, a coordinated series of tasks will take, taking into account. The fact that some tasks depend on others to be done first, and some don't. Some can be done in, guess what? Begins with a P. Concurrently? Yeah, they can be done concurrently in parallel. Yeah. Um, and scheduling likes, lets us work about that. So why schedule? Well, a couple of reasons. One is it, it lowers the chance of delay. If you know, if you, if you have the results of a schedule, you know what to prioritize, putting your efforts on, which can lower the chance that delay occurs in the project at all. 
It gives less risk that you'll be caught flat-footed. You won't be able to finish what you promised the stakeholder. That's important. Second of all, if there is a delay, it helps you recovering from the delay, it helps you replan how long extra is it going to take. And thirdly, it can give indication of who's responsible for, for a delay. Um, secondly, it can help us reason about huge numbers of details, like lots and lots of activities, and, um, and help you manage resources. Okay? Now, it turns out that there's a lot more to it than what I'm going to be able to cover, and formalizing it gives a sense of a lot of the basic issues, but there's some more tricky things that we won't be covering today. Okay, so schedules help us figure out roughly how long something will take, like a deliverable, a sprint. Helps us identify what's called critical path, which tells us which task we gotta stay on top of, because if we delay them, the whole thing's gonna be delayed. And it gives us a sense of of are we spending money faster than we thought or not, okay, and, and other resources. Um, okay, uh, now there are some things we shouldn't schedule. Um, and in fact, in software, there's a lot of details we don't schedule. Give me some ideas of, of things that we're not gonna put into a fixed schedule. If we have several dev devs, we're typically not gonna put who's exactly working on what at what time. We often have a queue and the devs take a next task from the queue. They, or they take a, an issue from the issues log and they work on it. So there's a feature that needs to be added and they work on that. And we don't try to pre-schedule everything. 30 years ago, 25 years ago, it was more common to do that. These days we don't. But there are still certain things we should schedule. Broad things like deployment uh, plans and uh, setting up, um, uh, providing a cut over for the client and um, uh, engaging in test rollout, etc. Okay, so so there are plenty of things we don't schedule because it's better to do them in a fluid sort of way. Um, then there are things we do. Okay, so one of the things I really want you folks to understand is the difference between. Gantt charts and CPM diagrams. So Gantt charts are one of the oldest forms of schedules. They achieved prominence in World War I, which basically systematized earlier thinking on them to, to diagram out what was gonna be happening when, okay? Um, you've probably seen these sort of things before. Have you you've seen these yeah. diagrams before? I, um, I used it to make for 370. Yeah, okay, good. So this kind of maps out for different times. Maybe this is week one, week two, week three. Maybe this is days, maybe it's years. But the point is you, you highlight for different activities when they're taking place, right? And so this is saying concept of feasibility studies are taking place through this, and they're gonna overlap a little bit in time with engineering and design. And it kind of gives you a sense what's going on when, right? Um, it's very popular. You'll find these things in huge numbers of projects, uh, including construction projects, larger projects like Microsoft Office, where they have to bundle together, you know, everything for Office 2013 has to be aligned so that they can all be released at once, right? So you have to have Excel developed, you have to have, uh, you have to have Word developed, you have to have access, you have to have uh, PowerPoint, etc. cetera. Um, now, a key shortcoming here, and this is really important, quizzable and examinable is what's missing in this sort of thing compared to other diagrams we'll be looking at. And the key thing missing, a key thing missing is dependencies. What here depends on what? So for example, can, can this guy only start after this? Or could he in principle start earlier? Why is that important? Why do we care about what depends on what? You know, does construction have to depend on engineering design? Does this have to be finished before that? Why do we care about that? Because it would give us flexibility if we knew those things. So we can identify which task can be done in parallel. Yeah, yeah, so I think you, you folks are on to that. Yeah, so can this be moved up, for example? So we could get started on that earlier. That's one thing. Another thing is if there's a delay, like if there's a delay in construction and uh, engineering and design and pushes it back by six months, does that, hit construction and delay that, or is it largely independent you know, of that? Um, so Gantt charts 
are really a good reporting framework, like what's going on when, but it doesn't really get into what depends on what and what if questions. If we delay this, what happens? So in order to address those things, we need a method called CPM or a critical path method. And this was developed after World War II and, and it's responsible for, for a lot of innovations in modern project management, a lot of success, um, and for the ability to handle large projects. CPM stands for critical path method. And I wanna highlight that it features centrally critical path. What you're gonna see coming out of this is an understanding of what's the critical path. What's the path we can't let up on or else we'll delay the whole project. It's gonna highlight which tasks we gotta keep on top of or they can delay the whole thing. And which tax have, tasks have some slack, have some give, have some leave, sort of leave, um, have some leave in them, um, some, some flexibility, okay? And this is a technique that depends on DAGs. Have you learned about DAGs before? Directed acyclic graphs? So basically they're sets of nodes, and, so vertices and edges where there are no cycles but otherwise it's a, it's a network. So um, you can have you know, a tree-like structure, you can have nodes which have multiple parents and they, they come together, but it's, it's acyclic, meaning there's no links back from lower edges to upper. It, it's, you know, either A can lead to B or B to A or neither, but you can't have A go to B, go back to A, okay? Um, and it's drawn in this topologically sorted way, meaning you put the things, you put the thing, if A, if, if uh, B can only be done after A, A goes to the left of B, okay? Um, showing sort of time along the x-axis. Axis. So basically you specify associated information and you're gonna run a scheduling algorithm. So CPM is different from Gantt chart. Gantt chart, you're gonna draw it directly. CPM, you're gonna specify some information about each task. And then you're gonna run this algorithm and it's gonna spit out for you when a task begins and when it ends. It's gonna tell you more than that, when's the earliest it can begin and when's the latest it can begin. Where the earliest, I mean, the earliest it can begin given all the things that have to be done before it. And the latest it can begin without delaying the project. Okay, critical concepts there. You may find yourself listening to this lecture again in a few, few, few weeks time. Okay, so the basic steps here is you can depict these in multiple ways, okay? This is what's called activity on node. We're gonna be concentrating on that. Here, each node, each vertex is an activity and edges indicate dependencies. So this is saying B requires A to be done before it can be begun. Um, so uh, the basic idea here is, look, we're gonna define a bunch of activities, tasks. I'll use these interchangeable tasks, okay? For each activity, we're gonna estimate the duration, the duration of that activity. We're gonna say how long we think that takes. And then we're gonna define dependencies, meaning we're gonna put a link from say A to B, if B cannot start before A finishes. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe you can't start coding until you've specified what the, the functions are that are going to be there. Um, or in test-driven development, you can't start developing the function until you've got some tests in place. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can't deploy until it's been tested. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea here is we're gonna perform CPM scheduling and what that's gonna spit out for us is essentially what's shown in this, this diagram here. It's gonna spit out for us, but it's gonna spit it out in a very particular way. CPM algorithm is gonna take in what the tasks are, what the dependencies are, what the task durations are. And it's gonna spit out for each task, early start, late start, early finish, late finish. Early start, 
and late start relate to the earliest and latest it could, uh, earliest it could start and finish, given all things have to be done before it. Late start and late finish relate to what's the latest it can finish, mark my words, without delaying the whole project. It's a different thing than the starts, okay? So we're gonna perform CPM scheduling and if it's acceptable, terminate. For your purposes, for the level at which we can cover it this semester, you don't have to worry about the resource usage, plotting out how many resources are in use. You're basically gonna be doing CPM scheduling, getting an understanding of early start, early finish, late start, late finish. And you can figure out critical paths from that, and you can figure out the, um, uh, the, what the slack is associated with each. Item, okay, so unless if we have two activities A and B, by default we're going to assume that can be done in parallel. If there's a link between them, directly or indirectly, if A is a parent to B or a grandparent, what have you, then that means A has to be done before B. Hmm? Hmm. Um, and this could arise for many reasons. Um, Maybe uh, for your purposes, shortage of people, maybe it's, it's by uh, convention, you have to finish writing the test before you start development. Um, maybe it's a physical constraint for certain projects. Um, so we're gonna talk about this activity and node diagram, okay? Um, and uh, this is related to what's called the precedence diagram method, which is that type of scheduling that's supported in tools such as Microsoft Project, Primavera Project Planner, online um, project management suites for software projects, et cetera. Okay, it's called PDF. And it looks something like this, and forget the, the crudeness of this diagram, but basically you've got, you've got this directed acyclic graph. And by implication, if things go from left to right, a link from between two things, the thing on the left has to finish before the thing on the right. So here we have a start. And you know the help system can go on in parallel with internationalization, where this is creating different language scripts for different parts. So maybe you want to offer this in English and French. Um, and uh, the, the um, creation of the appropriate text in the application for each of those. Um, needs to be uh, provided separately. So you can have internationalization going on together with the help system, together with development and testing um, and integration. Um, but at some point they have to come together, you're gonna to be testing internationalization and integrated with the help system, et cetera, okay? So help, for example, needs to be done before this integration step, internationalization has to be done before this big uh, testing phase and this development has to be done before this testing. Okay, um, we're not gonna cover activity on node, time is too short. Um, let's talk about the CPM diagram on activity on node, what we've just seen. So this is critical. CPM diagram takes as input three things. I mentioned them earlier, what are they? Yeah, okay, so there are the tasks, the durations associated with age, and the dependencies. What depends on, so which task depends on which other task to be finished before it. Out it spits these four things. So it's gonna run in linear time, forward pass, backward pass. The forward pass finish, uh, figures out early start, early finish. Those are the earliest we could start or finish a task given all the things that have to be done before it, all the things that I have to do first. The backwards pass, mark my words, figures out late start, late finish. Those are the latest we could start and finish this task without delaying the whole, the, the delivery time of the whole project, okay? Um, 
It's a different meaning to early and late here that I'm trying to, try. and basically the time between like early start and late start is how much slack you have because you can't start it before early start and you can't start, you can't finish it after late start without delaying the whole project, without causing ID4 to be late. And so you're going to have perhaps three days of give where you could do this task anytime along there between the early start and late start. That's going to be your slack. Mark my words, things on the critical path will have zero slack. Zero slack, no slack. They have no give. What does that mean intuitively? Anyone? You have to work on them. As soon as you can. Because if you delay work on them, guess what's going to happen? The project will be delayed. The project will be delayed as a whole. So these are things you can't let up on. You just got to stay on top of it. Because if you delay them, if early start is equal to late start, and you don't start it as the earliest you can, which is early start, and late start is the same as early start, if, if you don't start it as early as early start, you're going to be delaying that task and you could be delaying it beyond late start, and so it's going to delay, by definition, of late start, the whole project. Mm -hmm. And this is the key thing, because often in a project, there's only a small fraction of tasks that are on the critical path, or a, you know, a modest fraction. There's a lot of tasks which are not on the critical path, because those aren't the bottleneck. Those aren't the thing that's going to take the most time. They, you have a bit of leeway on those. Oh, it's a quick task. We could do that pretty much any time in here, but this one's going to take a long time. So we got to get started on it early. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to show a diagram here, and we're going to walk through this algorithm, and we're going to walk through it conceptually for an example going each way. I would argue that you applied this algorithm. Many times in your life have you applied, on the one hand, forward pass and backward pass. You just never realized you're running a critical path algorithm, okay? But you're doing so in your head, okay? So we're going to use this, this notation here. We're going to indicate the duration here, okay? Um, duration of the task. This is the number of the task. This is early start. This is early finish. This is late start, late finish. Okay. Again, what is early start? The earliest we could possibly start without ev with everything before it being. Yeah. Given that everything has to be done before, what's the earliest possible thing? If we're on top of those things before it, what's the earliest possible time we could start this? How about early finish? That's the earliest we could possibly finish it with all those things. Before. With all those things. Again, what is late finish? Late finish? Late finish is the latest we could finish it with all those things being done with, without delaying the project. Without delaying the project, yes. Good. And late start? Is the earliest we could start with those things being done without delaying Without the delaying the project. Good. Good. Um, okay, so we're going to fill this in. For a little diagram, okay? And these things, where do these come from? Where do these come from? They're output by the CPM diagram. The CPM, sorry, the CPM algorithm. CPM algorithm takes in again three things: tasks, durations of tasks, dependencies. And what it spits out are these things. And that allows us to drive the float. It allows us to drive the critical path, which and gives us a sense of exactly this sort of thing about when we can start and finish. But some of these will have slack. Some can be shifted around. <laughs> Not shown here. Um, they can be shipped around because they're not on the what? Critical path. Critical path. Okay. So this is the basic gist of the algorithm. Okay. It's, um, it has two passes. The, there's going to be a forward pass that goes from the, 
goes from the first test forward to the end. And that's going to figure out early start and early finish. It's going figure, to figure out the earliest time we could start a finish and finish a task given um, the what has to be done before it. By contrast, there's going to be a backwards pass, which is going to come back from here, come back, and it's going to have slightly different logic to it. And that's going to finish, guess what? Late finish, late start. Um, late finish and late start, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, and we're going to do that, having figured out how, what's the earliest time we can deliver on the project. Then we're going to go back and take that information and say, well, given, given the earliest time we can finish the project, when does this task need to finish? And then in turn, start to, avoid, to allow us to finish, this, finish this, this project on time, finish this whole sequence on time. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, so that's the basic logic of this, and I'd like to talk about some of the specifics. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, we're gonna do these two passes, um, and uh, and basically the overall project duration is gonna be the maximum of the early finishes for all the nodes. Um, and uh, in the backwards pass, we're going to be computing the, the late start and late finish as noted. Okay. Um, okay. So I want to apply the intuition here. Should be pretty straightforward to you. I've argued you've done this in your head many a time. Okay. It's 8 a.m. Suppose you want to know the earliest time you can arrange to meet your team, given you have to take a shower. You have to boil some water for, for uh, porridge. You have to eat breakfast. Let's assume you can't eat it while walking. Um, you have to eat it from a bowl and, and walking while holding that will freeze your hands or burn them alternatively. And, uh, and you got to walk to campus. What's the earliest time you could meet, meet your team? Okay, so what, what is going through your head? Let's, Let's 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 try to figure this out. What's the earliest? That or why why do you think I heard different estimates? Give me some reasoning why you might think one thing. Uh, yeah, sure. Sure. So when you take a shower, yeah, you can turn on the boil and let it water. Good. So that's canceled already. So 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 you're doing that while you're showering. Yeah, it's synchronous. Okay, good. Parallel. So how long do you have to wait before you could start eating breakfast? Ten, ten minutes. 10 minutes. And that's, uh, where did you get that 10 minutes from? From boiling water. Uh, good, because it's the what? It's the, of these two, it's, it's the, the maximum. Water. If this had been 15 minutes for a shower, um, what would that have been? 15. 15, yeah. It's, it's the maximum of these two. That's going to be key. Yeah. Um, Since we can't walk and eat, yeah. so those two are also independent. So good. It's going to be 10, 15, and 20. Yep. And then walk to campus. 20 minutes. 20 minutes, yeah, so exactly. Now, why why is that uh, why is that better than just adding these up? What are, what are you taking into account? You save five minutes. You save five minutes because you could do these in parallel, right? Because there's a dependency. Or you look, you can't eat breakfast while you're in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> these two have to be finished before you eat breakfast. You can't eat breakfast until the water is boiled. So you have to wait for the maximum of these two, right? So I'd argue it's it's eight forty five. Right, because it's 10 minutes from these two is the maximum, plus 15, right, 25 plus, plus 20, okay? That's the intuition, pretty straightforward, but you're taking into account what can be done in parallel, and when things are done in parallel, you take the max, because you're waiting for the later of them to finish before you can do the next thing, right? Okay, okay now here's the backwards path. That's the, that's the intuition behind the forward pass, right there, and note, maximum you're taking the maximum of the latest finish times of these two of the, of the early finish times um, when you're taking into account the early start time of this you can't start this until these two are both finished so the the early start of this is going to be the maximum of the early finish of those two okay how about this one your plane leaves you're gonna have a you're gonna have a, a, a plane out of town 
plane leaves at, at noon. Um, and you have, to, you have to figure out what time I'm going to get up to make this plane. Um, and suppose you, you got to do the same basic deal with showering and eating. You got to eat breakfast. But you got to call and wait for a cab, which you budget 20 minutes for. You take a cab to the airport, say 20 minutes, check in 10 minutes. You want to sit at the gate at least 20 minutes uh, and then sit on the plane for, for 20 minutes uh, with the idea be at the, their, uh, uh, they'll be boarding at some point. Okay, so at what time should you set the alarm? What are you gonna, how are you gonna figure this out? How do, you, how do you figure out what time to set the alarm? What's the reasoning? Okay, the plane leaves at 12. Start out call and wait cab. Uh, or, you, or you can start from the bottom actually. Yeah, yeah okay, so, so uh, my plane leaves at 12. So I need, to, uh, I need to get onto the plane. If I wanna be on the plane 20 minutes before takeoff, I need to be there by, by, uh, on the plane by what time? 11.40, right? Yeah. 20 minutes before this. So I need to arrive at the gate by what time? 11, 11 o'clock. Uh, and so I need to get to check-in by what time? 10.50, right? I need to get in the cab by what time? 10.30. Okay, I need to call the cab by... Okay, now, now what are you going to have to start thinking about? Yeah, like dependencies here, because what could you do in parallel here? Eat breakfast eat and take a shower. And take a shower, okay. Well, eat breakfast, you, you won't do while you're in the shower, but you could, I mean, you could boil the water and take a shower at the same time. Yeah. Could you eat breakfast and wait for the cab at the same time? Yeah, but that's not as efficient. So could you, could you get out of yeah. the, the shower and then call the cab and start eating breakfast and by the 15 minutes yeah. time you're done you the cab will be there in five minutes yeah. yeah you could and tell me um if we figured all of these things uh uh we'd be we'd be looking at when we figure out what time we have to wake up we'd be looking would we be looking at the the maximum of 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 these what if, if we consider the time when we need to start these to avoid delaying the whole project we'd be consider the minimum time right because we need to give time for all of these right yeah um okay so uh so basically there's going to be a forward and backwards pass that is going to depend on the forward way on the maximum of so the the late, the, the early start of a node is going to be dependent on the maximum of the early finishes of the nodes before it. You know, you, you can't start walking to, to the university until you've eaten your breakfast. Uh, I mean, you can't eat your breakfast until the maximum of time for either boiling the water and, and finishing the shower, right? And those are early finishes of those will determine the early start of eating your breakfast. By contrast, the backwards, we're gonna depend on the minimum time. So we're gonna consider, okay, if all the nodes that have to be done, if all these things that have to be done, what's the minimum uh, associated with them with their early, uh, with their late start? In other words, the latest, if we consider all of these, the latest time it could start without delaying us from getting to the plane, we have to wake up no later than that latest start, okay? Late start being the latest time we could start one of these things without delaying the whole project. Hmm? Yeah. Do you expect well, us to memorize the um, algorithm or just understand and be able to explain the algorithm? I, I want you to understand and be able to explain it. but. That basically gives you the algorithm, as yeah. you'll see. No, what I mean, by, like, like, like write it out. Write out no, no, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. I mean, I'd be surprised if you couldn't, but that would be more a test of can you formalize the intuitions. Yeah. And uh, I want you more to have the intuitions okay. about, about how it works. Okay, so imagine we have this. So here's a bunch of tasks. And imagine we have a dependency 
here between them just like this. And these are the amount of time that it's estimated things will take. I want to run the forward and backwards pass on this and get, get an understanding of this. Now, often I do this on the board, um, but I will, um, I will do it here uh, on, the, on the screen. So I want you to tell me with a forward pass, we're figuring out in turn the what what things are we figuring out in the forward pass? Do you remember? Early, early start, early finish. early finish. The earliest times it could start and finish, given all the things that depend that it depends on before it. Okay. So so suppose this is day zero. So what's the earliest that this could start, uh, this requirement solicitation? Zero. Given that it takes two days, what's the earliest it could finish? Two. Okay, what's the earliest, given that if, if we accept the fact of these, di uh, these dependencies, given the fact that design depends on requirement solicitation, what's the earliest this could start? Two. Two. What's the earliest it could finish? Nine. nine. Okay, day nine. Okay, now, we could continue to run, run through this, right? So what's the earliest this could start? Nine, and what's the earliest it could finish? 11. What's the earliest this could start? 11, 13, 13, 19. Good. Okay, but what's going on here? What's the earliest this could start? Given that this can't start until this finishes, what's the earliest it can start? This is nine. Where'd that come from? Because it was, it was the late or the early finish here, right? The earliest it could finish given all the things that had to go on was nine. So the earliest this could start is what? Um, nine. Yeah. It's nine. And what's the earliest it could finish? 13. 13. And what's the earliest this could start? 13. 13. Earliest it could finish? 17. 17. So what's the earliest we could finish the whole project? This, I'll, I'll remind you, this is 19, and this is 17. It's 19. 19. 19. We got to wait. We got to wait for whichever one takes longer, right? Okay, we got to wait. That's the maximum. Remember, that was what Moham was, was thinking about. He was thinking about, okay, you know, I've got to take a shower, and I've got to heat up the water, and the water takes 10 minutes. The shower takes five, so I'm going to be waiting at least 10 minutes because it's the maximum, right? Okay, now... Watch this, this is a, a key transition. This, the early finish of this, of, of these two is 19, 19 days. And now we say, okay, because of that, the latest we could finish without delaying this whole project is what? Is 19. Uh, the latest we could finish this without delaying the project. I mean, if, if you finish later than that, you're going to be leaving money on the table. You're going to be taking longer than you have to. So it's, it's 19. So the latest finish of this guy is what? 19. 19. The latest finish of this is 19. 19. Okay. And what was the, the late, late start of this? Anyone remember? 17. 17 and 19. What is that indicating, that difference? Okay, if the latest... We have two extra days. Yeah, you have two extra days. If, if you, the earliest you can finish it is 17. The latest you can finish it is 19. So you got slack. You got float. You, you actually have some give with this. You don't... You could finish it as early as 17. You can't finish it earlier than 17. Why not? Because you got all these things to do before it. You, you can't do it. But you could finish it at 18. Why won't that finish the project? Because you're what? You're, you're still waiting for these things, right? That's the critical path. You're still waiting for that. Okay, so if this is 19, what's the, what's the latest we could start it without delaying the whole project? 15. What's the latest we could finish this, finish this one without delaying the whole project? 15. Latest we could start it? 11. Okay. So keep that in mind, 11 here. Okay, this guy here, 19. it's 19 for both, right? The, the earliest we could finish this was what? 19. 19. And the latest we could finish it is 19. So 
the latest we could start it without delaying the project is what? 13. So this one, the latest we could finish it is 13. The latest we could start it is 11. The latest we could finish this is, the latest we could start it is nine. Now, does anyone remember from the forward pass, how do those numbers along here they're, differ? They're different zeros. Yeah, that's right. They're all the same as this. That is the indication of a critical path. The late start and the late finish, no, excuse me, the late start and the early start are the same. The early finish and the late finish are the same. In other words, the earliest we could possibly start it, given everything that it goes on before, is the latest we can start it without delaying the whole project. We gotta start it as soon as possible. And for finishing it, we got to finish it as soon as possible, or we will delay the whole project. So all of these along it was the same. Okay, now watch this, though. Does anyone remember what this one was? It was seven. Seven, okay. Um, and it, is that right? Uh, no, 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 sorry, 11. It was 11, I'm sorry. So this was nine, and this was 11, okay? So when do we have to finish this by to finish in time on the backwards pass this guy is nine yeah. this guy's nine as well this guy is 11 this guy is nine so the earliest we could start this is nine the latest we could start without delaying the project is 11 when do we have to start this guy or finish this guy nine. by nine because if we don't start by nine what's going to happen we'll delay the project we'll delay the project why yeah, it's part of the critical path. That's going to delay this guy. This guy has got to start by what time to avoid delaying? Nine. Nine. So if we delay this, it's going to start. So we need to take, ladies and gentlemen, of these two, 11 and 9, we need to take the what? Minimum or maximum? The minimum. We got to start such that it's small enough it won't delay any of the, the, the late starts of the others. So if there's a late start that's really small, we got to finish this guy by then so that we don't delay that. We have to finish it by the earliest of the late start of its successors. Do you understand that? Or else we'll delay them. If even one of its successors requires, you know, starting it by time one, we have to start this by time one to, to avoid delaying it. Because the latest that successor could start it's the latest it could start without delaying a whole darn project. So if we, if we finish this after that late start, we're delaying the project. Do you get that? It's still on the critical path. And then you work back from there. And, and I would argue this is nine. So this will be two. And this will be two. And that will be zero. And this is on the critical path, just like Moms suggested. Do you see that? So that's the forward and backward paths. Key things. When it splits, you can just use the values for early start, you know, there before. When you have a join like this going forward, do you take the max or the min? Max. When you're going backwards and you're dealing with late starts and trying to figure out the late finish of the preceding node, you're going to take the what? Min. The minimum. Okay? So that's, that's the idea. And I actually uh, fill it out, uh, fill it out uh, here so you can see that. Okay. Okay. Um, so this notion of float in Slack, that's just the difference between the early finish minus, or the, the late finish minus the early finish, or the late start minus the, the early start. It's the degree of freedom we have, right? And on the critical path, it will be what? Zero. Zero. Be zero, okay? Um, we have no gift. We, we have to start it as soon as the earliest time we can start it. Yeah? Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so the critical path here is the longest zero float path. Now, it's actually a more complicated definition if you don't just have, I can't start until that one finishes. It gets more complicated if you say, I can't start until that one starts and that sort of stuff. I'm not gonna deal with that. But basically in this case, it's, it's the longest zero float path. Um, there can, in principle, be more than one, but typically there's one. Um, it determines the minimum time for the whole project. For the whole project, that's the determinant. Remember that? 
This took 19, this took 17. So the whole project cannot be finished before 19. Because remember, when we came together here, it took the maximum of these, right? So the critical path is the thing that determines the, the earliest time we can finish the whole project. Typically, this evolves some over time because some things take longer than expected, and then they become the critical path. And they become the bottleneck. Right? This is the bottleneck. This is the thing that's taking the, long, the longest time. The other things, we have flexibility on. We have give on. Yeah, we can start that documentation a bit earlier, a bit later. That's not what's going to be holding us up. We have various ways of describing it. Right? That's not what's going to be, be delaying us. Um, and it's very common in projects to have certain long lead items you got to get done. Maybe it's asking the tech staff to finish something you know, set up a virtual server for you. You're gonna be waiting until they do that. You can't start something else. And, and so that's on the critical path. Maybe it's mastering a new technology. Maybe it's getting some, you know, some specifications written so you can start coding. Maybe that's on the critical path, okay? So critical path is, points out to you which tasks are the most important to stay on top of. If you let up on the critical path, you're going to be delaying the whole project. By definition of late start, late finish. You're going to make late, late start later than early start, therefore you're going to delay the project. Mm -hmm. um, if, it, if the two are equal and you delay it beyond that, I should say, if you delay the start beyond late start, you're going to delay it. Okay. Um, okay. So, so we, um, we saw, saw that. Okay. Now, in some versions of this class, I've taught some fancier notions um, associated with float. There's actually different ways in which you can quantify slack and float. You could talk about independent float or total float. What we're talking about here is total float. Some people will talk about how much can I do without delaying any of my successors so that none of the things that depend on me are affected. That's less objectionable. Total float is, is um, more aggressive in the sense that if I consume my total float, how much leeway do other people, um, people have in my, the chain that extends for me? Let's, let's suppose we have this and I say, oh, you know, I could, do you remember this? What was the, what was the latest we could start it without delaying the project? 11. If I said, ah, oh, come on, I'll, I'll um, wait till day 11 to start this. Do you think someone who's responsible for this task could be unhappy? Yeah, yeah because I've eaten their float. <laughs> they have no leave. leave. I've, I've sort of taken their flexibility away from them. I've, I've consumed their flexibility. And they could be blamed if they're late now because... How are they supposed to get their job done? They have to be right on top of it. Whereas if I, well, I've kind of lazed around and started it late, and now I've, I've eaten their float, even if I haven't eaten their lunch. And so there's a, I think called, I believe it's called independent float, um, where basically it's asking, hey, for the things that depend on me, the things that come after me, the things that that they can't start until I'm done. What's the, what's, what's the uh, amount of slack I have without delaying any of them? And you can have that. How could it be that for something I'm dealing with, for example, I could delay this without eating the float of this? How could that be? What, what could? Take one day rather than two. Uh, well, okay, so it will leave one day of float. But if this guy depended on something else, yeah, it could be this guy can't start anyway until that thing's finished, and therefore I could consume some of my float without endangering it at all, that, that successive task. So there's this notion of free float versus independent float, and, and um, uh, here, this is, so this is actually free float I was talking about, um, and then there's a thing called independent float, which is even bigger. You may wonder, like, why do people get worried about this? Well, if you're a contractor, let's suppose you're a, company that's contracted out software development to a couple to a couple other companies and um, and in the whole project's delayed you want to know you know who to blame people will say well 
it's not my fault. He ate my float. You know, he, he gave me no flexibility. So, you know, uh, I ended up taking, you know, a day longer. But um, that's only it only caused a problem because he he delayed by a month. You know, this other guy. And so, basically, you can get uh, with contractors can get into this blame game if they get sued. They can point say or you know liquidated damages. They could. They could say, "Well, it's really his fault because he ate my float. Um, he 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 eliminated all my flexibility that was there originally, but but because of what he did, he you know ate it up. So so that's why people can get into this sort of reasoning about sort of who's to blame. How can I? How much leeway do I really have without endangering anyone? That sort of thing. Okay." Um, but it's a critical path I want to emphasize. So, so let me repeat things that are critical for this lecture. Why we schedule? How does it relate to estimation? How does a Gantt chart relate to what we get out of CPM? What does CPM take as inputs? What does it give as outputs? What can we do with a CPM diagram? What's this? What is the basic intuition and way in which the two passes work? What is the first pass set? What is the reverse pass set? What is float? What's the critical path? Those are all key concepts coming out of this lecture. Does that make sense? Yeah. So those are um, some of the, the, the key elements that I wanted you to uh, to be able to, to read some up. Okay. That's all we have time for today. I will be going and uh, working on this